And um, my daughter has been uh, ill recently um, and has uh, been quite poorly. And the response from the school has been fantastic. Um, they have been giving her extra time. They've been very kind to her. They've been uh, keeping her very close, uh, making sure that she's all right. And she's been thoroughly looked after um, by the school. And I, I thought about the comparison with that and what sometimes happens with children who are showing other sorts of distress uh, within the school system. Um, how when we have a sick child, we pull them towards us. But when we have a child who's experiencing other sorts of difficulties, and I'm talking here about behavioural difficulties, we have a system which sometimes pushes those children away and sometimes pushes them away into um, the obscure peripheral vision of the education world where effectively they spend much of their career out of sight, out of mind. And I think it's worth thinking about what happens to children who end up in alternative provision, people referral units or are excluded from school. 1.4% uh, of children in these provisions get five good uh, A to Cs um, and that is 40% uh, less than, 40 times less than uh, for mainstream children. 89% of children who are in currently within the criminal justice system are um, children who were in alternative provision or who were excluded from school. So there is a huge concern. Now I am absolutely understanding the difficulties that these children uh, can present. And I'm not suggesting for a minute that these children should be all included in mainstream schools all the time because I know they can represent an enormous threat to the education of other children. They uh, disrupt their own education and they also disrupt the education of uh, uh, the teaching uh, within schools. But nevertheless, we need to have a system that is as responsive to the needs of children who are on the periphery of the education world as for those children who are in with the heart of it. And uh, uh, last year, as a, as a response to the riots, Michael Gove asked me to um, do a review into alternative provision because so many children who were involved in the riots uh, had found themselves in alternative provision. And by that, I mean both pupil referral units and I also mean alternative providers commissioned by schools or by local authorities. And that can be anything from the local college uh, doing full-time courses to uh, motor mechanics and hair and beauty uh, one afternoon a week in a, in a local salon. Uh, and within this review, uh, there were two things that came from it. First of all, the staggeringly good practice that there is around the country, how some of our pupil refer referral units are quite remarkable places where the lives of these children are transformed by the education they receive. Uh, for example, the Bridge Academy in Hammersmith and Fulham which does a remarkable job in changing the lives of these children. Uh, alternative providers of really high quality who are taking on children uh, who are extremely difficult, extremely challenging, and are doing great work in terms of preparing them to become successful adults. But there are also some murky corners of this world. Uh, some pupil referral units are um, I think it's not unreasonable to say bleak and, and somewhat depressing places where the expectations on children are low, uh, where the academic rigour is not always there and where there is no real sense that the children are being prepared for the next stage in their life. And for some alternative providers that schools are using, children are being removed from schools, not excluded, and placed into alternative provision where, quite frankly, at worst, it's simply out of sight, out of mind. The quality assurance arrangements are often not good enough. The expectations of what these children can achieve is often not good enough. Uh, the targets set for these children and a real sense of what the outcomes can be are often simply not good enough. And therefore we need to, uh, um, and, and through my review, develop a system that is more effective in meeting the needs of these children. Because if we don't, we saw, as we saw last summer, this very small percentage of, of pupils actually um, cause a huge amount of time, effort, money, and, and, and also social uh, difficulties. So my recommendations around this were very simple. First of all, we have to have more, uh, uh, there has to be more within the system accountability 
for what happens to these children. We have to shine a light into the dark recesses of this world and make sure there's accountability for the way that schools are using alternative provision. Uh, and therefore, one of my recommendations is that Ofsted, as part of its subject surveys, looks at the way that schools are commissioning alternative provision. Why have you sent this child to this provider? How do you know this provision has any good? What are the outcomes you want from this uh, provider? How will you know when the provision has been a success? And what are the next steps for this particular child? So asking those quite rigorous uh, questions to schools. But my other recommendations are around looking at making pupil referral units more a part of the education establishment. Too often there is a situation where the pupil referral unit sits on one end of the spectrum, the local authority is in the middle, and way out at the other end are our schools. And my sense very strongly is that schools and pupil referral units need to sit much more closely together. And I'm recommending that pupil referral units become academies either as part of a, a sponsored solution, working closely with a, with a local school. And think of the possibilities here of, of the symbiosis between the fantastic, rigorous teaching and expectations of our best schools, along with the expertise in behaviour management of our best pupil referral units. Think of the opportunities there we could provide for some of these children. Uh, some of these pupil referral units will just choose to convert, and already we've had 10% who have, who, who have, um, uh, have expressed an interest in converting. Some of them will convert on their own. Some of them in big counties will convert into big groups, and some of them will do it closely with schools. But there are real opportunities, I think, for schools here to improve the quality of local provision. And what concerns me is a situation I found at a local authority the other day where I said it must be great having that Prue up the road that you can use uh, to help your difficult children. And the head teacher said, we don't use that Prue because we can't get our kids in, because the uh, referral process is labyrinthine, and because they don't do the courses we want to do, and because we want a quick turnaround, and often children stay in there for good. And yet that school has its budget top sliced in order to fund that pupil referral unit, and that school effectively double funds places in good quality alternative provision. So the government's exclusions trial, which I think is a very exciting uh, new venture, with some risks attached, and that's why it is a three-year trial, whereby schools will be responsible, but most importantly, will have the delegated budget uh, for children who are permanently excluded, will mean that rather than wait until you reach the end of the road with a pupil, and spend £18,000 on a place in a people referral unit where the outcomes may not be good. Schools have an opportunity to look at intervening earlier and using this money more creatively. And in Cambridgeshire, where they've been trialling this for some years now, there have certainly been difficulties, and this is certainly complicated. But their people referral unit has dropped in size from 700 places uh, to 120 places, where more people are in school. And, and sometimes the things schools are doing are quite simple. Paying a teacher to stay after school to teach science to a kid who can't cope in normal practical activities. And think of the cost of that compared to sending that child out to a people referral unit. And I think here is the other opportunity that's provided for academies by uh, this programme, or for schools and academies by this programme, is that schools can now get together collaboratively and develop their own alternative provision. There is now scope for alternative provision free schools uh, to become an important part of the landscape so that if your pupil referral unit isn't good enough, if there isn't good enough local provision uh, in your area, there is an opportunity to get together with other schools using your expertise to develop your own provision. And a fantastic example of a free school, an AP free school which is opening in September is the East Birmingham uh, Network. This is a group of schools and academies who've got lots of expertise and felt there's a group of children within their midst who are not permanent exclusion cases, quite, but they're on the edge. But with extra help and support, they can keep these children within the mainstream. And therefore, they are developing a very exciting provision um, between, I think, it's seven schools who are working very closely together, using their expertise to develop the right provision for their children, uh, the children that they know, the children that they understand, uh, so that these children can get, um, and it's on a separate site, but it's close to where the schools are, so that they can get the support and the help that they need. And I think there is a huge opportunity here for schools not to rely um, necessarily on local authorities, not to rely on the local people referral unit if it's not doing a good job, 
and many of them do a fantastic job, but to actually uh, devise their own uh, provision in order to meet the needs of, of this challenging bunch of children. Uh, and within that becomes the accountability and the recognition that yes, these children are difficult, but yes, there is more that we can do. And I think when schools feel that there is somewhere to go, when they feel support is available, then that's when schools have the energy to be able to do the work that needs to be done around keeping these children within education. So there are two things then. First of all is that there's the opportunity for pupil referral units to convert, uh, either within sponsorship groups or, or, or as a trust on their own. And Vanessa Minor, I think, is here from... Vanessa's over there. Vanessa is, is, is one of the uh, academy brokers here. So if people are interested in the possibility, people from pupil referral units here, or if people are interested in the possibility of sponsoring a local pupil referral unit, then Vanessa is the person to speak to over there um, from Liz Sidwell's office. So that is the one possibility about the academization of pupil referral units. The other possibility is about uh, opening an AP free school. And there is an opportunity here, I think, for academies as this exciting programme, which is transforming the lives of children across the country. As, that's, as this programme moves onwards and upwards um, successfully, uh, we must be certain that we don't leave these children trailing behind uh, in our wake. Uh, because if we do, we all pay a price for it. So my other urging is that there is a possibility for schools to open AP free schools, to look at, um, if you will, inhaling their own smoke and to making provision for all the children in their local area uh, and, and not leaving behind these uh, most challenging and difficult children. So there is the challenge, I think, that, that came as a result of my review, that we can't ignore these children. They're not going away. In fact, uh, if you speak to many people, they will say there's more of them around. And therefore, the education world has to see them here in front of their face and no longer in, their in the peripheral vision, uh, out of sight and out of mind. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.